All right, uh, let's get started. Uh, welcome everyone to the second episode of our uh, webinar series contribute by our uh, fellows of the Kadri project. For those who are not familiar with Kadri, uh, we are building a data infrastructure platform and uh, helping researchers across the uh, mid Midwest as well as national wide uh, to access big bibliographic data sets like Web of Science and uh, Microsoft Academic, Academic Graph. Here's our contact information. And we have to uh, acknowledge our funding and uh, data support from Institute of Museum and Library Sciences. Data were coming from Web of Science Group and Microsoft Research. And we have a group of partners who's been very helpful in uh, making this possible. Just a reminder that uh, we initiated our call for a uh, research of cor uh, coronavirus related bibliographic data sets. And uh, we'll be start reviewing the applications uh, starting May 1st. We already got uh, several applications. So if you haven't done this yet, please apply here. <clears throat> and a, a few previews of what's go going on with the country platform overall. And uh, this webinar is a, really the, the main event during this special time. And uh, and we've seen uh, our previous presentations from the team from Ohio State. So we already we have recorded this presentation. So feel free to go to our website and uh, watch if you missed it. Coming up in June 17th, we have the third installment, uh, Understanding Citation Impact of Scientific Publications Through Ego-Centered Citation Networks. And uh, it will be in the same channel. So we welcome you to uh, join us again in June. So here are all the links. You can actually uh, find all the uh, events and presentation recordings in the news and event uh, on our website. Also, yeah, feel free to try out our alpha release. Uh, it's open for everyone, as long as you have a, a EDU account, EDU email address or a Google account. So without further ado, I want to introduce today's presenter, uh, the team from Michigan State University. Uh, I think the presenter here today is actually more than the uh, four pictures listed here. Uh, they include uh, Jane Panimo, who, uh, who is an academic specialist with a research appointment at the uh, MSU, Agrobio Research and College of Agriculture and Natural Resources. She also served as the head of the research evaluation and data analytics team. Uh, her academic and policy related uh, publications focus on program evaluation, metric design and data analytics. Uh, eco eco econometric studies on agricultural development, internationalization of science and inter intellectual property right management for life sciences and agriculture. So in this particular case, I think uh, the year we'll be talking about Mapping Collaborations and Partnership in SDG, which stands for Sustained Go Development, uh, which is United Nation program. Devin Higgins, who is a uh, digital librarian programmer, uh, also from MSU Libraries. He builds digital collections for the uh, Michigan State University Libraries using computational techniques to enlist digital objects in exhibits that encourage exploration and engagement. He also supports digital scholarship at MSU, focused on data modeling, text analysis, and visualization. Uh, Dr. Uh, Scout Calvert uh, is a data librarian at MSU. Her recent project has traced social aspects of data-centric knowledge production in lay communities of generic genealogists, livestock breeders, and citizen scientists. Scaled also uh, investigate data and meta 
data practices in libraries uh, among academic researchers, informing data policy issues in academic libraries. So I just want to mention that uh, she also joined us in Rome back last year. So uh, it was unfortunate uh, we didn't have the chance for her to present back then. So I hope this time she get her uh, fair chance. Dr. Guming, uh, Guangming is the technical uh, resource person on research and innovation data and business information, data integration and uh, analytics, and digital tool use and the management of, for MSU Innovation Center. His education is mostly related to natural resource management, sustainability, system science, and decision making. His later work experiences mainly with the uh, areas of location de development, so, uh, solution architect, and information management and services. And I think uh, also I have to mention the fifth person whose picture is missing here is uh, Anusha Mayunasa, who is a graduate student from the uh, Electro and Computer Engineering Department of MSU. Her academic interest lies in the field of data analysis, visualization, and data science. So I believe all five of them will be presenting today. And the topic is more than fitting in this troubled time where we need international collaboration more than ever. So uh, I'll hand it over and stop sharing over here. Uh, thanks, Sharon. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to uh, this webinar sponsored by the uh, Cadre Project. I hope that uh, you guys are hearing me okay. Um, and uh, sincerest wishes to all. Um, and we all, we hope that we all uh, stay healthy and safe amidst uh, this uh, pandemic. Uh, my name is Jane Payumo, and uh, Shauran uh, introduced uh, my team members, and we are the MCAP uh, team. And the MCAP stands for Mapping Collaborations and Partnerships in SDG Research. And our team was formed in response to a, the Cadre Fellowship call for proposal uh, in June uh, 2018. And we are very honored and excited to be part of the fellowship program and collaborating with uh, the Cadre project. Um, so like uh, Sharon indicated, uh, all of us uh, will have the opportunity to shine today. Um, Devin Higgins and Scott Calvert from MSU Libraries are going to share uh, the webinar with me and will be sh speaking shortly. Uh, Wang Ming He from uh, MSU Innovation um, and Anusha uh, from uh, my, my colleague from MSU Agbang Research. And if you guys can just say hello quickly so that they recognize you. Hello, I'm Scout. Hello, Devin here. Hello, this is Guami. Hi, everyone. This is Anusha here. All right, thank, thank you uh, to all of you. And I hope you also hear them very well. So um, I will begin this uh, webinar uh, with the background information and about our research, then provide you with the objectives. And Scout will be presenting the methodology of our research. Guangming and Anusha will present the findings of our research. And Devin will share the social network analysis and will share with you some dynamic um, networks. And I'll be giving you the conclusion and next steps for our project um, before we conclude. Uh, and Scout is kind enough to be to help us navigate the slides. So thanks, Scout. So this webinar, as Shaoran indicated, is about the use of bibliometric data to contribute to the growing studies on sustainable development. Uh, we know that uh, sustainable development has become a popular catchphrase uh, in contemporary development discourse, and arguably. Now, as Sharon also mentioned, that it relates to the coronavirus pandemic that we are experiencing right now. Um, the United Nations, which is also in a hot seat, uh, already claims that this pandemic will have a short and long-term impacts across the sustainable development goals, which is the shared global footprint that focuses on eliminating poverty, um, fight inequality, and confront uh, climate change. And we know, uh, and most of us know, that the Sustainable Development Goals uh, was replaced 
It replaced the Millennium Development Goals, which were established in 2000 uh, to tackle the same goals. And the United Nations recently uh, specifically indicated that the COVID-19 pandemic that we are experiencing right now will specifically impact um, two sustainable development goals. And those are SDG number eight, which focuses on economic growth, and SDG number three, which focuses on good health and well-being. Uh, next slide, please, uh, Scott. So here is a graph that clearly shows that there's a growing number of uh, publications or research outputs uh, concerning SDG research. And for us and for all of the other um, experts interested in, in bibliometrics, it will be interesting uh, to do a deeper dive on the attributes and characteristics of this growing knowledge on SDG. Next slide. So specifically, our research is a follow-up to the 2019 Web of Science report titled Navigating the Structure of Research on SDGs. So there is a link uh, provided there when uh, you click that uh, link when this PowerPoint is shared with you. Uh, this report uh, uncovered interesting trends in scientific and research outputs supporting SDGs. Uh, this report also tallied regional patterns of uh, a collaboration in SDG research. And as you can see in this graphic that European nations especially uh, dominate this area of research with North America and Asia and the Pacific region contributing less. Uh, as Sharon also mentioned a while ago that research collaboration, not only in SDG research will be very important uh, these days. And we are already seeing that one um, in uh, COVID-19 related research, especially in vaccine development, and hopefully in the future uh, for other areas. Uh, next slide. So our co-cadre fellow, uh, who is also attending today, Dr. Caroline Wagner from Ohio State University and other pioneering authors has already emphasized the importance and the growth of research collaborations. So, uh, in their uh, set webinar last time, they highlighted and showcased the increasing collaboration happening in China and Chinese institutions. And uh, other authors uh, claim um, increased uh, a collaboration in diverse research areas. Today, if we do a quick search of publications and research collaboration just in the title, it will also reveal a similar trend. The possible effect of a collaboration on improving research performance and productivity at the individual, at the institution, and at the country level is particularly appealing, especially to our group. So we know that co-authorship is one of the most tangible and well-documented form of research collaboration, and many authors have already established uh, uh, the use of these proxies, and we know that uh, as now it is uh, defined, co-authorship of course when two authors co-publish a study. Uh, but how often and how sustainable are these collaboration? So these are the main questions that we want to address in this study. Next slide. So through literature-based analysis, uh, this research therefore investigated collaborative research related to the sustainable development goals and gained insights for sustaining global partnerships. This study was guided by the following research questions. Uh, first, how did SDG collaborations evolve and mature and did this result in a true partnership? Second, are collaborations generated by SDG research? research resulted in long collaborative research, co-creation or co-investment in equitable partnership. And last but not least, beyond collaboration metric, which other metrics we can use? So to address the research questions that I've just mentioned, our study is aimed at offering some evidence on the patterns of collaborative behavior for SDG related research and its evolution of time. Specifically, our research using co-authorship data sourced from publication and citation databases uh, to um, first quantify, to update, to visualize,
conceptualize and report out for the partnerships over time in SDG supportive research at the author and institutional levels. We also hope to develop a scoring measure or partnership index supported with appropriate parameters that can be used to, con to define and conduct partnership analytics related to SDGs. And we also hope that through this study, we will be, and through our text mining activities in collaboration with the Cadre project, that we can identify emerging keywords and search terms that can be added to existing SDG personas. So our presentation for today will mainly focus on our progress to objectives uh, one and two. Then I will ask uh, Scout now to present the methodology and details of the approaches we use for this research. Uh, take it away, Scout. Thank you, Jane. Okay, so here's our basic methodology. Bibliometric data was sourced from Web of Science and micro, uh, Microsoft Academic Graph, or um, Web of Science, uh, WOS or MAG for short, respectively, through the cadre databases. And um, these data were collected January to March of this year. We searched the phrase sustainable development goals and millennium development goals for all indexed documents and publication types. This was also the approach taken by the Web of Science report uh, Jane mentioned previously except that we added um, Millennium Development Goals in our search. Uh, Guan Ming will provide details about this later. So this 20 year uh, study covering the publication window 1999 to 2018 included all publication types found in both databases. The UN published the Millennium uh, Declaration in 2000. However, uh, United Nations publications typically reference 1999, a year before this declaration, and many of the reports related to progress on these goals. Again, the metric we analyzed for this study is collaboration by using co-authorship data as the proxy. We looked at output rate per year, growth rate computed in terms of compound annual growth rate, collaboration rate, repeat collaboration, and collaboration at uh, time point, and collaboration time point. Our analyses focused on the collaboration dynamics of the, uh, at the individual or author and institutional levels. So the, for the author level analysis using Web of Science data, we only utilized author and publication data with ORCID information for now, and we're working with the cadre team um, on this issue. So um, as an additional caveat, we'd like to emphasize that just like any other bibliometric study, it's expected that some author names and institutional affiliations may have been miscoded in both databases, and this would slightly underestimate the collaboration network. Since we're sourcing our data from two publication databases, will our observations be the same? In this presentation, we will also be addressing any differences observed in um, uh, WOS and um, uh, MAG data, MAG uh, source data from cadre databases at the same time uh, that, as we address our research questions. This said, this study is neither inclusive nor comprehensive. We hope that our results will serve as an informational resource uh, to facilitate understanding and revisit how we define collaboration and collaboration over time with regard to SDG related research. We also want to indicate that although this research is about um, the UN's sustainable development goals, our findings don't contribute to the scholarly discourse on sustainable development itself, but rather on collaboration pa patterns. Uh, so uh, for the benefit of webinar participants that are um, newer to the bibliometric world, um, here's some basic foundations or methodology. In this work, we uh, based our analysis on existing indexes, specifically the um, uh, uh, one developed by Iwanidis, uh, which measures co-authorship uh, for an individual researcher, pri primarily in terms of two quantities, I sub one and R. I sub one is formulated uh, in an H index like fashion for a given researcher, uh, which, um, and that's I sub, um, I sub one, uh, which is the number of authors who appear in at least I sub one papers with that researcher. So for example, if a researcher has written eight papers uh, with a consistent set of seven other research, uh, other co-authors, that researcher's I one will be equal to seven. And with more publications, there's more opportunities for co-authorship and more papers written in common with each co-author. 
thus we expect I sub one to rise as a function of the total number of publications n sub p. So assuming a power law relationship, we can write n sub p um, it, uh, equals I sub one raised to the power of r uh, and in turn obtain r, which is the ratio of the log of um, n sub p to the log of I one. In our model, uh, we assumed the same power law relationship proposed by Ivanidis. So more publications uh, indicate more opportunities for, for mo more uh, co-authorship among the same authors and more papers written in common with each co-author. Guanming will discuss um, other approaches uh, and concepts that guided our study um, in, in a bit. So um, we, use, we also use Rodriguez, Waltman, and Van X method for constructing co-authorship net networks with full and fractional counting. They use N and M to denote the number of researchers and the number of, number of publications included in the analysis. And the element um, A, uh, A equals uh, A sub I K to denote an N by M authorship matrix. We only included in our collaboration um, analysis publications with at least two authors or those that involved collaboration. This means that N sub K is greater than one for each publication K. So using full counting, uh, we use um, uh, U equals U sub I J. This is a symmetrical N by N uh, matrix. And so that um, this element of this matrix equals the full number of counting co-authorship links between researchers I and J and is represented in the equation two. In matrix notation, notation the co-authorship matrix is given in equation three, and hence the co-authorship matrix is obtained by uh, post-multiplying the authorship matrix A by its transpose. Uh, we supply the same equations, uh, we apply the same equations for author in an institutional uh, level analysis. And now um, I'm gonna pass off to, to Guan Ming. Okay, Scott, thank you. Um, here, I'm going to talk about a little bit more about you know, the data and the methods and how we get the data. Um, uh, the left graph shows, uh, you'll see three authors work together and publish like four papers uh, over time. Um, you'll see author one and author two published one um, papers in 2000, and then another one, 2010. So here's the key point, you know, we treat the publication P4 as the output of the collaboration, you know, uh, publication P1. And the, the right graph just show the author network. So the numbers like two between author one and author two just show how many um, publications they had um, in the past. So we'll use this uh, author network data to visualize the uh, collaborations. Scott, next please, okay. Um, here, I just trying to summarize uh, what we did about the, uh, the data. How do we get the data with, uh, from the Cadre, you know, database, uh, MAG, and uh, Web of Science? So first, uh, we extract the data, just filter the data publications uh, uh, by abstracts. You know, if they contain this SDG and MDG uh, words in an uh, abstract, so we, we get paper, author, institution information. And then we export the data from the big database into uh, CSV files and then import them into our own uh, database for analysis. Um, we did, it, like uh, uh, Gene and uh, Scott said earlier, we did two levels of uh, uh, collaboration analysis. One is at author level, another one is at institution level. So first for author level, so we, um, for each paper, uh, we find all the unique author pairs, like the pop, author one, author two published a uh, paper in year one. So using that data, we create the author level collaborations over the years. So you will see um, these two authors published one paper in year one, 
and then they continue to work together, published another one, paper two in year two. And then we summarize all the data, you know, over years. And then I'm going to present, you know, some uh, uh, summarized, you know, data. So we did a similar thing for uh, at the institution level. Um, also, we did this follow pretty much similar process for both data sets, Microsoft and uh, Web of Science. So here's the um, summarize about the data. Uh, pretty much about the uh, SDG research in the past 20 years. So you will see the output is pretty good. The uh, increase in like 20% over years since 1999 up to uh, 2018 for both the uh, data sets. Here I actually show left uh, graph show MA uh, Microsoft data, the right one should web of science. Uh, the trend is similar. Uh, it seems that this uh, research area is pretty active. Scott, could you next, please? Okay. So here we show um, the collaborations over time. Uh, you see the bubble size in, uh, indicate the percentage of collaborations uh, publications. So you see uh, the, the 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 darkness show the uh, percentage rate. So you see, uh, I'm sorry, the the darkness show the uh, years. So the darker uh, the later. So you see. Um, for both author level and institution level, you see more uh, collaboration over uh, years. For author level, it started from like a 40% increased up to 75%. At the institution level, uh, start from like 12% increased to 45% uh, in uh, 2019. So over the years, we see uh, researchers are working more uh, collaboratively, you know, over um, uh, research, we see more uh, output. Scott, next. So, this graph we uh, we show uh, at the. So we dig into a little bit uh, deeper. So you'll see uh, for the collaborated outputs you see more authors work together, more institutions work together from the Microsoft data. So the green numbers, 25% is the annual increase growth rate. So you see both from the both uh, author level and institution level, uh, they increase like 25% 20, uh, every year. So you see more, uh, authors, more institutions, you know, join uh, for SDG uh, research. Both, uh, okay. So the next slide, this one, we noticed that a trend when research work together, when they collaborate together for SDG research, but they just happen only like one time over the past like, uh, 20 years, the majority of collaboration so here, the big bubble, and um, like show how many um, publications, <coughs> how many pairs of authors that work, work together, uh, like just for once. Um, so you see the same trend, both at author level and also the uh, institution level. Scott, next, please. Here is another way we look at the collaboration over uh, time, over years. So you'll see the, uh, at the author level, only 9% of collaboration, you know, uh, generate outputs, continue to generate output. But for at the institution level, there are way bigger numbers, like 30% uh, repeat collaboration level. 
So all the findings over here uh, is about from uh, MAG data, uh, Microsoft data set. And then I will transfer to Anusha. She is going to present about uh, results from uh, Web of Science. Thank you, Roman, for uh, providing us a detailed explanation on the methodologies and the results from MAG database. So now I'll be presenting the collaboration results, what we have discovered for Web of Science data that we collected from Carte database. So from the Web of Science data, we found that more than 6,000 authors and around uh, 800 institutions have engaged themselves in SDG research collaboration. So we can see that these collaborations have increased steadily over the years. And also from the graph, uh, we can observe that there is a yearly increase in the compound annual growth rate for about 29% uh, for authors with co-authoring publications and around 22% for institutions which are collaborating with other institutions on SDG network. And we can see that this growth is highly significant in case of both the analysis so um, moving on to the next slide, um, Rao, please. Yeah. So if it, uh, so diving deeper into the collaboration dynamics for publications that are indexed with Web of Science. So this particular graph shows an increased collaboration rate at both author level and at institutional levels. So to be more uh, specific, uh, we can see the graph at author level analysis. There is an improvement in collaboration rate from 21% to 30% from the year 1999 to 2008. And similarly, in case of uh, institutional analysis, there is an improvement from 0% to 12.96%. Uh, so this uh, collaboration uh, rate is actually complementing the findings of uh, uh, one of the authors called Na Nakamura, who worked on navigating the structure of research on SDGs. So if we compare our results that was showcased earlier with the MAG data, this increasing trend um, for both author and institutional level, it actually reflects some of the changes uh, that occurred in the social organization of uh, scientific community who preferably are interested in working with SDG researchable areas. So uh, moving to the next slide. Um, yeah, so this chart uh, represents the number of times the collaborations has occurred at both institutional level and at the author level. So we can observe here that the author level chart uh, shows us a good number of collaboration among the uh, authors. Uh, we can say that at least 25,000 authors have collaborated more than once, but however, uh, there is a minimal collaboration seen among uh, institutions on SDG research. I mean, we can say that majority of uh, institutions have collaborated at most only one time here. So that is one of the drawback where they need to work more. And the next slide, please. So yeah, so after analyzing the results from our previous slides, we found a small percent of uh, repeated collaborations in Web of Science data. That was similarly what we found in MAG uh, index collaborations as well. So most interestingly for uh, Web of Science uh, data, we saw a different trend. So we can see here that authors, they tend to collaborate in future years more at a rate of 18%, but whereas for institutions, it's only uh, less than the half, that is only 7%. So this is a very interesting finding and we'll have to be investigate more on this. So moving to the next slide. Um, the previous one, yes. So to conclude my discussions in terms of uh, time varying aspect of SDG network. So if we try to filter the publications that have collaborated more than two times, so we have found authors that have collaborated again uh, within 2.7 years, whereas uh, institutions have collaborated with other set of uh, institutions after 4.38 years. So. As you will note here, the number of years for uh, web of science data is quite low because we have captured uh, the data which has only um, our ID here. So our sample uh, size is quite low. So we are working with the Cartier team to 
um, sort this issue out. So, and to conclude, um, if you look at the MAG data, uh, the results as explained by Guangming, the authors tend to have uh, less repeated collaborations with their colleagues. But in this slide, it shows that when those collaborations are happened, they have happened sooner than later. So, which is very true in reality. Like you can say that you would like to collaborate again with the someone whom you know a year ago than someone whom you know 10 years back. So this is all about um, our findings with Web of Science data. And now I'll be handing it over to Devin to tell us more about uh, network visualization. Thank you, Anusha. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about some network visualizations that we made of, uh, of the graph of collaborations between authors and institutions. Um, so network graphs are one way to view and make at least some sense of, of large amounts of data all at once, um, both in order to communicate findings at a broad scale, and also they can act as exploratory interfaces to help us ask new questions. Um, so the next few slides of graphs are, are similar to co-citation graphs. Um, each circle or, or node here represents an author. Um, and lines between those circles represent co-authorship on an SDG paper. Um, the size of the circle corresponds to the number of articles published by that uh, author within our data set. And um, the thickness of the line between circles represents the frequency of, of co-authoring. Um, so in this example, we're only seeing co-authorships that occur two or more times. Um, and so this is the Microsoft Academic Graph data. Um, and so that um, large circle we saw on a previous slide with all those collaborations that only happened one time aren't represented in, in this social network graph. Um, the networks I'm gonna show you were computed using the Python network X package. Um, and then were rendered using something called flourish.studio, um, which is a uh, platform that I don't have a lot of experience with um, but I was recently exposed to it with another project and I liked its balance of uh, ease of use and uh, functionality. So I'm going to try now to share my screen to show a bit more of an interactive version of these graphs. Uh, so just one moment. And I hope now that you are seeing the, my screen um, in a larger version of the graph. I'm seeing some nods, so that is great. Um, so this just gives a little a bit more room and we can see that some of the features of the graph that help you explore is that you can um, hover over various authors here to get information about them, the articles they published, um, and which other uh, authors they're connected to. Um, so what can looking at this graph tell us. There's, there's a few things I thought I would um, highlight, although I think we as a team have a lot more exploring to do here. Um, so the first thing you notice is that there are lots of collaborations happening um, on a smaller scale. You see all sorts of small two or three author collaborations that have at least extended beyond publishing one paper and have published two or more um, about SDG or millennial development, Millennium Development Goals in the past 20 years. So that's sort of the background. There's, a, the, there's that noise of a lot of different um, collaborations happening. Um, then you also notice some formations that kind of look um, like, I guess you could say polygons or something like that, where it's repeated collaborations among medium-sized groups of authors. And they almost look like self-contained um, little units here. Like we have this one that has you know 12 or so 15 authors, and they seem to have collaborated a number of times all together. Um, they've only published, you know, each of them in our data set, two articles. And so it's um, those few articles that are driving the connection between um, all the authors in this group. Um, so you see there's a number of little uh, formations like that, little clusters on the graph. Um, and then you also see what's more interesting are the ways in which some of those clusters extend out more widely and reveal um, distances between authors of several degrees. And so you see in this sort of um, central area here, there's collaborative groups where one or more members then extend out into other clusters of collaboration that are happening at other, um, in other formations. You know, and these, we can look at the next slide in a moment to get a little bit more detail about the institutions 
that are um, sort of connected and driving these sort of uh, multi-level collaborations that are happening. So let's take a look at the institutional graph here. Um, so this helps us see which in institutions are collaborating on SDGs and which of these collaborations are, are sturdier. Um, so again, with this graph, we're looking at only collaborations that result in two or more articles um, in our results set. Again, it's the Microsoft academic graph data. Um, so here circles represent individual institution and the color indicates the region of the world um, by a continent where the institution is based. Um, I use some geocoding software in the, a Python package called GeoPy um, to assign countries based on um, institutions. And, and that was a mostly successful um, venture, although there were a number of um, matches that the software couldn't find to institutions in our data set. Um, and there are also some weird um, false positives where the geocoding software found a match, but it's the wrong match. And a lot of times it, that happened more with corporate entities. Like I noticed um, one of our institutions in here is a Ford Motor Company and they, uh, you would think United States would probably be <laughs> the headquarters um, for, that in, for that company, but, it all, but the, the matching software found their office in the United Kingdom. So it's listed in this data set now as a European um, institution which may be actually accurate. We don't know where this research was carried out. Um, but so, um, so the graph is a start at modeling whether partnerships are, are domestic ones, whether they're international or maybe, you know, transcontinental, we could say, um, across continents. So um, this geocoded data also gives us coordinates which we can use in the future to create actual maps to, to show how this, um, which you, where in the world precisely these sorts of um, collaborations are happening between. Um, and so again, you can sort of explore, you know, by hovering over things, we can see at the top, here's the University of Texas, El Paso. Um, for our data set, they just have one connection, which is to Drexel University. Um, Drexel then in turn has a few more connections to other institutions in the US. Um, but so far, we're all looking at internal to, you know, North America here. But then if we, um, check out where Drexel's connected to, we get to the National Institutes of Health, and there we see a real ramification into other areas of the world, as you would um, expect. Although you notice that still at this point, there's no connections to um, Asian institutions. Um, and for that, you know, we can see that the NIH is connected to um, the World Health Organization. Um, and by the size of the circle there, I think they're our largest publisher among this data set. And of course they have connections to um, all sorts of institutions. Uh, I think probably from every one of our regions that we have represented um, in this graph. Um, so that's, that's the Microsoft academic graph data. I'm just gonna show you briefly the web of science data, which looks uh, a little bit different. Um, this takes us back to, to author level collaborations. Um, and so instead of having that, those sort of extended clusters that we saw with Microsoft data, we have this one giant connected ball of co-authored articles. Um, and interestingly, many of the most prolific article, uh, authors in our set aren't part of that central cluster. Um, and so I'd be tempted to argue, although we don't know quite for sure yet, that a lot of what we're seeing here has to do with um, articles with a ton of authors and then our, our graph is showing that they're all sort of interconnected here um, and that then we're also dealing with a case of um, where we're limited by only uh, having data for authors with ORC IDs um, and so our, our, our web science data is quite a bit smaller and so you see yeah all these central um, authors here only have published a few articles in our data set but the ones over here um, who are less connected to other author, uh, author, authors actually published a lot more articles on um, SDGs. Um, and so with that, I think I will go back to the slides, Scout. So I'll stop sharing my screen. Give me just a second.
Um, and, and while that's loading up, I can um, take us back to our, the research questions that we, we set out to answer um, in terms of how sustainable are these, these partnerships. Um, I think so far our answer, we've been able to develop some sort of partial answers to some of those questions. Um, and if we define a sort of true partnership as individuals working together to achieve a common goal that resulted in a publication um, that was extended over a certain period of time and um, that maintained a collaborative arrangement for more than just one um, research output, then, then yes, we see a lot of that in our data set. We see a lot of those partnerships happening. Um, but if we look to, at the sort of next level of those sort of partnerships and we, um, if we're looking at how sustained those are, and if we're using a bit of a um, longer time span to kind of uh, assess that, then, oh, there we go. Thanks, Scout. Um, we see that there are often the collaboration rate isn't as uh, elongated as we might ex expect. Um, this could also be partially because we have a relatively short time period here working uh, with the last 20 years or so. Um, and so with this research, we saw the value of using metrics beyond commonly used ones, um, such as looking at repeat collaborations and looking at the period of time that elapsed between those collaborations. Um, and so the research so far has enabled to give these sort of partial answers and sort of some insight into the, the area where, of inquiry that we've set out for ourselves here. Um, but I think we have more to do. Um, so I'm going to turn it back over for some conclusions and next steps to Jane. Uh, thanks, uh, Devin, and thanks, Scott. Um, so in closing, uh, through the uh, partnership with Cadre, uh, the MCAT team has embarked on an interesting bibliometric research, which uh, you guys heard, to understand the collaboration dynamics for research that support the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Um, so this partnership and our Digna Fellowship with uh, Cadre, and I'm encouraging those who don't have, who haven't applied their data fellowship yet with Cadre, please do apply. And then looking at the 20 year publications data um, for Microsoft Academic Graph and Web of Science, as uh, Devin said, we were able to an answer partially some of the questions related to this emerging topic and um, invalidated the, the following, that indeed we saw that there's increasing publication outputs for SDG research over time. There is also an increasing uh, collaboration rate for SDG research over time, uh, but with a caveat that if we use the simple definition of using this co-authorship as a proxy and defining two authors being able to publish a study for one time, then uh, we, they are collaborating at either at the author level or the institutional level. Um, however, um, as David um, alluded, that if we uh, consider true partnership as long and productive collaboration, then uh, we can conclude that we're not there yet and we are ready to uh, reinvestigate that. So we also heard that re uh, repeat collaboration is very rare among authors, but greater for institutions. And if those uh, collaboration happen again, or we saw that repeat collaboration occurred uh, for authors, then they happen earlier uh, while later for um, institutions. And we know that both of these observations uh, reflect reality. So for our next steps, uh, Scout, uh, uh, next slide, please. Um, so for our next steps, uh, we have some future activities uh, related to uh, further refining our search strategy, especially for the Web of Science data, and um, to be able to validate that interesting graphic that you showed earlier, and to also look at the prominent keywords that showed up uh, so that we can uh, potentially uh, supply that or forward that to those who are working in SDG related research. We also want to look at uh, institutional case studies and uh, hopefully focus on uh, Michigan State University or Indiana University to understand uh, the state of collaboration in SDG research, applying uh, some of the metrics that we've mentioned here and uh, potentially validate and do a mixed mode um, analysis and, and uh, 
triangulated with the qualitative data and confirmed through a qualitative survey so that we can map those factors that affect collaborative behavior among authors and also at the institutions. And uh, we, we learned uh, a few minutes ago that uh, uh, Kadri project is working on enhancing their citation uh, uh, data and information. So uh, we hope to benefit access to those additional data set in the future and be able to link our results with citation data and check whether um, citation also affects uh, the collaboration dynamics at the author and institutional level. So once we finish all of this, we hope that uh, we'll be able to publish our results and revisit the, this research later on and see especially whether there will be an impact of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic in terms of research collaboration in this field. So um, also I uh, would like to share to everyone that the Times Higher Education Impacts Ranking for 2020 has recently been out. And that now includes SDG as one of the performance metrics and this will be um, an interesting area to explore as well. So uh, we'd like to end our presentation by giving you some references to check. Um, and uh, thanks, uh, thank uh, Kadri King also for letting us uh, access their databases uh, and for Microsoft Academic Graph and Web of Science. And for my team here who accepted the data challenge with me, uh, Devin, uh, Scout, Anusha, and Wang Ming, thank you. So on behalf of the MCAP team, uh, thank you so much for joining us. And if you have any questions, clarifications, and, or comments, uh, we also like to learn from you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for the MSU team. What a great presentation. I saw already uh, some communication going on in the chat. So uh, this is time for you to raise questions. Uh, we have uh, time for several of them. <clears throat> Please unmute yourself if you wish to speak. Um, Caroline here, I'd like to ask a question. May I go ahead? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, thanks. Hi, thanks team, very, very interesting. So much work and great. Um, presentation. Uh, thank you so much. And I thought the references to um, to the literature were very helpful. I, I did want to ask um, where you have developed the idea or, or why you've developed the idea that repeat collaborations are more valuable than a single collaboration. Um, and, you know, is there literature on that or has anybody done a survey on that? that you are drawing from. I mean, it's, it wasn't, wouldn't be my expectation that we would say that repeat collaborations equals better um, work. So I'm just wondering, um, you know, why or how you develop that expectation? Sure, um, so like I promised to my, to my group, I'm gonna defend them first and then they're gonna help. <laughs> so uh, the, the thought process and our thinking behind this is uh, because we're thinking about sustainability and we're, we're taking the experience at the institutional level. So our group is also charged with developing tools that will help evaluate international agreements and most often uh, our, our group will be asked to check whether there was an output of that previously proposed collaboration with an institution. So before we do it again. So that means that, so that was the thought process uh, that helped us, uh, that helped us craft the study in order for us to see whether uh, did some of those institutional collaborations ever happen again or at the author level or at the institutional level uh, but of course as we've indicated in our um, uh, conceptual framework that uh, we are guided by that simple definition of uh, collaboration as two authors just collaborating at uh, collaborating on a paper and we also recognize, uh, secondly, that there are collaborations that, for example, if you attended a conference and you write a conference proceeding, although you haven't really worked on 
work with that person on research, but you become an author, you became a co-author of that person, then when the database, uh, the database will find it as a collaboration, even though you did not really work together, as in work together. So, um, and we saw, as, uh, as everyone saw here, we, we had some interesting things uh, that we can unravel further and hopefully uh, we can develop some predictive um, analytics and being able to uh, put some threshold there, whether two, three or four, which, is, which can help us, what can be a standard just for the hope of, of establishing a standard number of papers in order for us to define, yes, indeed, we've collaborated. But uh, so those were just uh, some of the, the reasons. And, and Scout, Devin, Anusha, and Guangming, uh, if you have additional thoughts that I forgot, uh, please do share. Scout is uh, raising her hand. Yeah, um, I don't know that we, thanks, Jane. Um, I, I don't know that we think necessarily more collaboration is better um, or will result in better work. But, um, but if we can see that there's a threshold at which maybe, um, uh, researchers move past one co-authorship to some other number, um, we can then characterize that and, um, and, and ask, is this better? Does it lead to something, some other quality that might be um, helpful uh, for this work? So, um, so we don't know, but we'd, we would start by characterizing um, what, what those thresholds of collaboration would look like. But um, I think part of this also is the, um, the nature of sustainable development goals as being a, a global issue that um, uh, relies on um, you know, potentially international collaboration. And, and so we might um, also um, want to know uh, what those international collaborations look like uh, for the sustainable development goals and potentially um, it, you know, if, they, if um, sustained partnerships develop, what that might have to offer. If they don't, what does that, that look like? Um, and I think you know, for myself, um, and I think we've sort of like, we don't have, I don't know that we have any literature on this, um, but um, it, is it potentially a truly, um, are, are, are those international collaborations, particularly um, as uh, Jane showed the, um, uh, that the United States is not, has not been um, as uh, prolific in those collaborations. Is, is, is it, um, do we learn something about the nature of international collaborations on um, sustainable development goals and how those may or may not, um, uh, you know, if, the United, if people in the United States are writing papers on sustainable development goals, but they're not doing international collaborations, why not? Um, these are certainly questions that, um, re that uh, uh, require um, international, you know, perspectives and uh, uh, from the, from many nations and not just heavyweights like the United, the United States. So um, the first step is to characterize that and see is, the, is there something here and then we can investigate, is it better or is it not better? Is it an extractive relationship or is it a, um, some other kind of relationship that's mutually beneficial and so forth? And like I mentioned too, um, the moment uh, Shaurad and his team shared to us access to the citation data, I think, that will also help us define the value and whether uh, whether two or more collaboration or single collaboration makes sense. So I look forward to, we look forward to that connection, Shara, in the future. That's a fascinating idea for sure. And uh, we do have time for one more question, perhaps. If you comment and question, just unmute yourself. Uh, if you have more questions, I have uh, posted links to the uh, this particular uh, webinar. Uh, you can find our uh, MSU teams contact information in that page. Uh, feel free to uh, 
communicate with them that way. So thank you, everyone. If there's no more questions, we will uh, conclude the session. Yeah.